so many gardens, never enough time. Hi, I'm Heidi from Garden Crossings and I'm at Walter's Gardens and I am trialing the trial beds right now and there are so many plants to talk about. So we're gonna go ahead, this is the third in a, I don't know how many part series it'll end up being, um, but we're gonna go ahead and walk through these aisles and talk about all the different plants that are blooming right now. If there's anything that interests you, you can head to our website, gardencrossings.com and if it's something we carry we'll get all the information up there for you so you can read more about these particular plants uh, this is a zone 5b 6a garden here in west michigan so for those of you watching wondering you know where are these plants growing this is where we're at so let's go ahead and walk through these gardens so the color theme of these gardens seem to be at least right now purples oranges and yellows so a lot of the varieties we see here are going to be kind of in that color palette so let's start off. These bees are busy and that's what I feel like today. A busy bee checking out all the plants in the garden. This here is a lavender and it is loaded with honeybees. Um, I'm not seeing the variety listed here. Um, it's a little tall to be sweet romance, but very fragrant and just a pollinator's dream right now. Seeing some primal scream daylilies, Nephophia orange blaze. I love the Nephophia. I've said that before in the other video. There's another orange blaze. They're just, they're whimsy and fun. The sedum up front isn't blooming yet, but I think the foliage is worth talking about. This is the sedum coral jade. And that will be more of a fall blooming sedum. They kind of did kind of a swoop through the front border here. There's some clematis stand by me. This clematis actually has been blooming for probably six, if not more weeks at this point. You can see there's a lot of seed heads there, but still a lot of blooms. So really a very long blooming clematis from what I've been seeing as I've been coming through these gardens every couple of weeks or so. Here's a closer look at the primal scream, extra large, beautiful, bold orange bloomers. Looks like there's some one in a melon coneflower there. Some delphinium in the back. The delphinium were in their prime, although they're still looking pretty good, but it was probably about two, three weeks ago when the delphinium were really showing off and beautiful. One thing they have planted in a lot of their gardens right now, though, is this grass. This is the, I'm gonna probably pronounce it wrong, but stippa grass or like Mexican feather grass. This is so dreamy in the gardens. I just love how it just, so light, so airy. Uh, the, the ends of it being kind of that cream color it's just so pretty to watch as it's blowing in the breeze. It's covering up some Ever After Veronica, so let's just lift it up so you can see those beautiful Ever After Veronica. And I think they look really nice with that grass in the background. One in a melon, cone flowers, and there's also some Asclepius tuberosa in here, which is a great plant for the monarch butterflies. They love milkweed, and it's essential to have milkweed in your garden um, if you're looking to attract those monarch butterflies to your garden. Some Nepeta cat's pajamas. So you can see it's already bloomed once and that's kind of the stuff it's kicked off to the edge. And now it's coming back again in the center and gonna do another cycle of blooms. So if this was in your garden, you could go ahead and trim off those spent blooms and enjoy the second and even third round of blooms as they come. More Nephophia. Nightlight Sedum, which looks a lot like the back in black. You'll see there's kind of a theme how it just kind of carries through in this garden. Uh, it's pretty easy on the eyes because the colors just consist, consistently repeat. It's very repetitive and it's really easy to look at. Um, here's another Nephophia. I believe this one is called, oh, this one's called Poker Face. I was thinking it was solar flare. Monarda here still blooming a little bit. Monarda were blooming better probably about three, four weeks ago. But even if we're thinking, you know, it's been in color for four weeks and this is what we have, that's still color and it still looks great. Another Nephophia. Some more sedum. I believe that delphinium is blue lace in the background there. 
Here is the sedum tiramisu, great foliage, fall blooming, but even when it's not flowering, the foliage is really stunning here in the garden. I love lupin, and this is, or excuse me, I, I do love lupin, but I love delphinium as well. And they have such a mass planting of delphinium in this garden that it is gorgeous to see. More of that stand by me clematis. So what do you think? What do you think about the orange, yellow, blue, purple look to this garden? Is that something you could see yourself doing? As we cross the aisle, it's a little bit different plants, but still kind of that same theme with the oranges and the blues. The yellow you're seeing, that's the storm cloud Amsonia. That was a spring blooming plant. Kind of giving a little bit of a nice contrast right now in the garden. More sedum. Lav uh, Minarda. Pardon my lavender, too. That one's still holding on pretty good. Looking fairly full bloom. Campanula. Columbine. So columbine was one of the first things I talked about way back in April, beginning of May. This plant is still putting on some flowers. Some of the toffee twist grass. Now this Monarda is past its prime, but even though it's past its prime and there's not a petal left on it, look at the beautiful seed heads. Even the seed heads are giving gorgeous color after the plant is finished flowering. Yellow, my darling, I believe. Coneflower. Some more. These are itty bitty little daylilies. There's not a tag, so I'm not sure exactly which ones they are. They look a lot like um, Stella Deora, but I don't think they are. But just that really small flower. So when you have clematis, do you a leave them with the seed heads on like we're seeing here or will you at this point go ahead and trim them back so one thing that's kind of interesting is those seed heads of the clematis are often used by hummingbirds to create their nests so maybe you might just leave them on now this is chartreuse on the loose nepeta so this is a newer a new variety chartreuse colored foliage a little bit lighter purple flowers typically the most flowers i was seeing was earlier in the season um, but look at that great foliage color that adds a lot of interest amongst all these dark greens in the garden some more veronica i think that one might be the happily ever after again it's just such a pretty periwinkle blue bloom firefly sunshine yarrow looking nice Look at here, more of that columbine. That plant does not want to give up. Hello yellow, Asclepius. More great plants for the monarchs. I believe this is the Gold Rush Alstroemeria. Solar Flare. Sunshine Yellow Yarrow. Firefly Sunshine Yarrow. So you see how those Nephophia, they just add little pokes. Haha, <laughs> they're red hot pokers, right? They just add little pokes of color out in the garden. This particular variety is quite tall, the yellow. It's one of the tallest actually in the series. But just look how fun and whimsy they are in this space. A lot of yarrow. There was also a bunch of delphinium in here, but it looks like they maybe got trimmed back. Because like I said, these have been blooming forever. Here's some more delphinium. Such a dark, deep purple. Beautiful colors. Some grasses. Some panicum totem pole. Uh, totem pole is a great gra grass because it's fairly narrow and very straight up. So these will get plumes on them later on in the season, 
but I think it's important to note the habit of this plant, how it doesn't kind of fountain over, it really does just go straight on up. Monarda, again, pretty much done flowering, but still adds color into the garden. So what are you thinking about this garden? The purples, the yellows, the oranges? Is that something you could see you planting? What was the favorite plant that you saw? I'm always curious to know what it is that intrigues you most. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, as always, please feel free to leave them below. Hopefully this video showed you something maybe different or new that you haven't seen before or have never heard of. Um, we're giving you even a little bit of garden inspiration as far as how you want to uh, place maybe colors together that you would never would have thought of planting. Thanks for watching. I'm Heidi from Garden Crossings.